God bless you and good morning, Greater Works Christian Church of Suitland, Maryland. We welcome you to our edifice this morning and we welcome you online as we celebrate the glory and the goodness and the magnificence of the Lord God Almighty. So this morning we're gonna start off with our congregational hymn, Blessed Assurance is in your bulletin. Please feel free to join in and sing with us. So we can praise him. Yeah. Let us really have been always be in the spirit of praise. Yeah. Praise and worship will always make the presence of God yeah. Yeah. with you. Yeah. So let us call on the presence this oh, morning. You know, we can't do not, nothing without the presence. He said, in my presence, there's liberty. In his presence, there's everything. So let everything who is his presence. Oh, oh, Father, I just want to thank you. Daddy, I thank you so much. Daddy, I thank you so much for your presence. Daddy, I thank you so much for your loving kindness. Daddy, I thank you so much for your son, Jesus. Our Lord, our Savior, our Redeemer, our Sustainer, the one who gave us divine purpose. Now, Holy Spirit, this morning, you are welcome in our midst. Holy Spirit, we yearn for you. Holy Spirit, we desire you this morning. Holy Spirit, we want to see the full manifestation of the power of God in the name of Jesus. Now, Holy Spirit, move anything we need to move out of our midst in the name of Jesus. So God the Father, God the Son can move in freely and have his way. Holy Spirit, today, remove the man out of our eyes and let us see through the word of God. Let us hear to the, the hear of God. Let us really be touched by the power of the word of God in the name of Jesus. Jesus, have your way in this morning. Have free process. Do what you do the best. Because we know when your presence healing will occur, the labors will occur, breakthrough will happen, miracle will happen. Lord, oh, let everything, all the signs of wonder, ready, who follow your presence, follow us in the name of Jesus. 
That's right. Uh, from we can get to worship and praise the Lord That's right. okay. because His magnificence as well. He is a glorious, giving, honorable God. He's the one that keeps us day after day after day. After day. Look to your left, look to your right, 
and tell your person you're looking at, I love you, and there's nothing, nothing you can do about it. it. Amen. Hallelujah. God is just good like that. He's so good to us that he lets us know we can love each other in spite of it. In spite of anything that comes our way that don't look like him, we're going to love that too. So we hope you feel welcome. Our pastor has come forward and invited you to feel welcome. If you don't feel welcome, well, I don't know. <laughs> but we're going to start with our announcements this morning so that you can govern yourself this week accordingly. We're starting, as usual, with our Monday through Friday morning prayer service. Prayer line. You call in. You can zoom in. or call in and let your prayer request be made known. And if you can't zoom in or call in from 7.30 in the morning to 8.30 in the morning, Monday through Friday, we have a box in the back on the welcome table where you have the opportunity to put a prayer request in writing and put it in the box that says love live here. The box is not open by anyone except me and the, and the pastors. And I put the information in an envelope and pass it off to them so they can lift your concerns and your prayer requests up in prayer through the week. So if you can't make the, the prayer line on Monday through Friday morning at 7.30, Make your prayer request known before you leave today. God bless you. And on Wednesday evenings at 7.30 p.m., we have the same Zoom line number and Zoom entrance number that you can come into the rooms, as I call it, coming into the room for our midweek Bible study. This is where we open the word of God and we break the word of God down and see how it impacts each one of our lives today. You can listen, but it's also good that you participate. I know Pastor Marcel is always encouraging us. Now, what does that mean to you when he read the scripture? Because it will have some significance to your life, whether you believe it or not. Once you read that word, you'll say, oh, yeah, that similar situation happened with me. Or, yeah, that happened with somebody I know. Or, I can use that to encourage somebody today. So call in on Wednesday evenings for our midweek Bible study. I promise you, you will learn the word and you will grow in the word and you'll find your freedom in the word and you'll share that word. I promise you that. Amen. As we go forward, we ask that you would keep in prayer and remember our sick and shut-in. Every week, we ask that you pray for Brother Butch Settles, Minister Patricia Trim, Brother Victor Asul, Sister Jakuta Dunmore, Dr. Ife Williams, and Dr. Marcella Coase. So keep them lifted in prayer. And we pray for each other. That's what we do at Greater Works. We keep each other in prayer. Now, on, you also have in your, in your um, bulletin, you should have an information that says your share order is due. So make sure you see me after service. This is the share food menu. If you don't have one, we'll get one for you. If you're interested in participating in this, this ministry helps to feed people. And it's not an expensive thing to do. If you took somebody like Pastor Ida always talks about how she used to take people to Safeway and Giant to get them some food. But if you want to make a donation, if you don't want the food, if you want to make a donation of the food to Greater Works Christian Church, we'll make sure that those who are in need will receive the food. So look at the menu. You'll see it has some great offers on it. And the price is just right. Amen? Okay, Brother John, where are we now? Okay. Pastor I, you want to talk about this one? We put this up because Pastor I is looking for a piano player. We are all looking for a piano player. And we are looking for praise team members. So if you're interested in either being a piano player or you know someone who is a piano player looking for the potential work in a church, please call Pastor Ida. The number is here. It's also in your bulletin for you to call her and make her aware so she can reach out and make a contact. If you're here or if you're online and you're interested in being a part of the praise team, please let us know. We will welcome you with open arms. Come on in the room. We really want you to feel like you can participate. This is your church. God has blessed you with certain gifts and talents, and he wants you to use them to the fullest. I tell people all the time, I want to go home empty. 
When my name is called to the rolls, I want to go home empty. I want to have given every bit of what he gave me. I want to want to be able to have said, Lord, I gave it all away. I gave it all away. And we want you to contact us either. But today, as we celebrate Memorial Day weekend, these names are in your bulletin. If you will open your bulletin, and I really want to ask if you would speak their names. These are members of the Greater Works family. I know we're celebrating Memorial Day weekend for all of those who served in our armed forces, and we do honor them in this weekend. We honor God in them this weekend. But we also wanted to honor our fallen heroes and sheroes from Greater Works Christian Church. So if you would join me in calling out their names. Tierra Harris, Wilhelmina and Dan Leeks, Dr. Dolores Davis, Reverend Gregory Proctor, Reverend Ronnie Hinton, Deacon Gary McPherson, Sister Phyllis and Brother Francois Alexis, Sister Beverly Yates, Sister Rita Yates, Sister Rita Yates, and Aunt Miko Chingas. We ask God to bless their soul, bless their spirit, and bless our encounter with them as children of the Most High God. So I just want this to play for one second. Because we know those who have died in Christ are not dead, and we will see them again. So we say so long for now, until we meet again. We, are, we will now go into the rest of our service, and this song is also in your bulletin. God will take care of you. Amen. And we, we ask that you join, because remember, this is service.
Hallelujah. How many of you can attest to the fact that God will take care of you? I bet you if I pass this mic around, everybody has a story about how, how God took care of them. When I think about one of my one of my biggest memories of God taking care of me was when you know I grew up in Detroit and I was raised in Detroit. Detroit gets bad weather and lots of ice and snow. And when it snows in Detroit or Michigan, period, it's just bad. And our roads are bad. And I can remember I was on the road, I was driving and going, going wherever. I don't even remember where I was going now. That's been a long time ago. But I can remember that as I'm on this freeway. The back of my car started coming to the front because the ice is so thick and I'm on the freeway. Now you can imagine now this is this is twirling is what it is. You twirling the back of my car started coming to the front. And and I'm like trying to straighten it up, but you know, it's only making things worse. And so when I got to the edge, the car went on the edge and flipped into a ditch and wound up upside down upside down tires up in the air so that means i'm on the roof of the car and you know so many people pulled over to help and everybody thought this is going to be disastrous do you know i walked away with not one scratch god will take care of you they had to pull me out of that car and my car was total my car was total but god i didn't have one scratch isn't that something God will take care of you. And I say that to someone who's going through something that may be difficult right now. It may look like it's impossible to get out of it without a scratch. Hallelujah. But God can get you out of a situation without a scratch. Without a scratch. Amen. 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 I'm going to ask you to open your Bibles to Psalm 28. Psalm 28. God will take care of you. Yes, he First three, first two verses. Page 444. Psalm 28 on page 444. Hallelujah. We ask that if you can stand, if you will stand to honor the word of God. Yes, hallelujah. Hallelujah. It says, to you, Lord, I call. You are my rock. Do not turn a deaf ear to me. For if you remain silent, I will be like those who go down to the pit. Hear my cry for mercy. As I call to you for help. As I lift up my hands towards your most holy place. Hallelujah. I don't know who God has given that message to, but right now, the Lord hears you when you call to him. He says, hear my cry for mercy as I call to you for help. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of his word. Amen. Amen. are in the church. So we encourage you to become a tither. I know that when I first started tithing, it was difficult for me. But once I got the hang of it and I saw how much God will bless you, not just with resources, not just with money, but God will just bless you with so many things. When you are trusting in him, because tithing says, I trust in you, Lord. That's really what tithing says. To give a tenth of your income says, I'm trusting in you. And so when we trust in the Lord and we give that tenth of everything that comes in, we give that tenth to him. And over time, you'll even give more than the tenth because he will make it so abundant that you don't have to have all of the money that you think you need. God will give you more than enough. So I just want to encourage you, Ty. I want to encourage you to try it and see. Just give God a try and see. Hang in there past the hard part. And watch and see if God will pour you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive. He'll take that house you, you, you're, you're buying and, and make it five times the value that it was. Hallelujah. He will do things like that for his people. So I encourage you to make try it and see if God won't bless you. Make Push past that hard place. Because, you know, sometimes we try it. We want to put 
going in and expect to get the, the, the benefit the next day. But God says, I want you to try me. Keep on doing it. Show me that you really mean it. And watch and see if God won't bless you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want to ask that you would get your donation out and let us, let us pray. Hallelujah. 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 Father, we thank you right now for these sure. tithes and offerings, dear Lord. We thank you, Father, for the only reason we have it to give is because you have given it to us. And so, Father, we just thank you right now for all you poured into us. We thank you right now, dear Lord, that we've got keys that can get back to home through a car, dear Lord. We've got keys that'll open a door. There's some folks sleeping on the street, Father, with no key to a door. But, Father, you did not let that be our story. It's all because you have blessed us with resources. So, Father, I pray right now for all of your tithers, all of your givers, dear Lord. And I pray right now, Father, that you continue to pour back into them as they pour into your kingdom, dear Lord. Father, we just thank you right now for no other help we know. There is no other help we know than you, dear Lord. So, Father, let us support your kingdom, that your churches might exist on every corner, dear Lord. That programs in churches might exist because of the tithes and offerings that we bring. And Father, we thank you right now. We thank you, dear Lord, for blessing us. We thank you, Father, for giving us something to give, dear Lord, and blessing us with that. And we thank you, Father, for bringing the increase. Yes. Bring the increase into our finances, dear Lord. Bring the increase into our finances. Father, we thank you. We praise you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Red Sea, through the Red Sea, 
by the Red Sea. Yes. My heart cries out, hallelujah. I ask you to indulge me as I find this song because, you know, it's just been a challenge all week, but I'm rebuking everything that ain't of God. Amen. Everything is not of God, I'm rebuking it in his name. In the name of Jesus Christ, I'm rebuking it. Amen. So I ask you to rebuke with me Amen. so that God will be glorified as I find this song. Amen. And if we rebuke together, we're going to glorify God together. Amen. 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 In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So I'm thinking about water today. Thinking about water. And we're going to wade in some water.
the very same thing that Rafael Nadal is doing. Because what you see is always God want to use this morning, but you know also Satan is the spirit. He need a dwelling also to operate on earth. But that's why God said, I put life and death in front of you. Choose. If you choose God, he going to use your vessel to make a vessel of honor. But if you choose the enemy, God say, I don't know you. But you know the good thing is, because you're here, you chose God. And because you chose God, God will do something. He will blow your mind. This is where he going to blow your mind. He going to blow your mind. I want you to expect something. You're not here by accident. Because he said the step of the righteous are out of him. He ordered your step for a reason. He wants to do something. You know, today is the word. But the word again, I want you to pray. We go to church like we're going to a movie theater. But I'm sorry, church is not a movie theater. Church is you go for a place of transformation. Because when you go there, you got to go with your fullness so you can receive an impartation. So you want to receive something from God. So you don't go there and, and look at the preacher or look at the saint like, a, you know, it's far away from me. No, 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 no. You come so you can receive something. So, but to receive something, you got to really be open. So I'm talking to your spirit right now. Let your spirit be open to receive something. Because when your spirit is open to receive something, your, your coming here will not be a man. You will go different. You will go filled. You will go powerful. You will go out and be able to fulfill your calling. This message he gave me, do you know, after Easter, Jesus came and fulfilled his assignment. When he finished his assignment, he was, you know, around us for 40 days. And after that, he went up. It's called Ascension. But one thing you got to remember, before he left, he made us promises. And the promise he said, you know, wait. That's why people don't understand it. Do not go and do God's work if you know it. Will. My message to you today, if you go to do God's work and you know it, will, you're going to be defeated. That's why he told Peter and all his disciples, went and to the Holy Spirit. 
I want this morning to talk to you about Pentecost. Pentecost is the day when the Holy Spirit filled us as a believer. Do you know as a believer, what really that day, it was a promise to the Lord that people think it's just starting with Jesus. That's why it is important for you to understand Jesus was in the Old Testament. When you read the, the, the Bible, even the Old Testament, you got to read it with your understanding with the eyes of seeing Jesus. If you read it and really meditate with the eyes of looking for Jesus, you find Jesus. Let me take you to Joel 2. Joel 2, 28. It was the prophet Joel who prophesied that long time. You know, you know, the credit if you have in your just take the, you know, take your yes, everything is there. Your seven notes, everything is in your seven notes. You know even we, why we do that? To make a sample. So you don't have to go and flip and flip and look and look. You have in your sermon notes. All you need is reading. It is what is written in your Bible. I put it in your notes. And the good thing is I put it so you can go and meditate on it. You know, at least all week you can digest. You can really work on it. Let the word of God. He said my word is a spirit. And life. So when you can walk with the spirit and the light of the word of God, that will change you. That will equip you. That will fill you. That will give you power. So when you go and your week will not be a week of any week, it will be a week of power. Why? Right? Because you have it. So I say, join 228 to 2019. And it's should that, that was a prophecy. Joel was a prophet. Who made this ready a prophecy? In that time, we didn't even, Jesus was not in the brain. Jesus was not in the brain. But he made that prophecy say, and it should come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. This morning, this is what will happen. He's going to pour his spirit in all flesh. We are the flesh who must receive the outpouring of the spirit of God this morning. He said, I put my spirit in all flesh. Yes. He said, and I should come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughter should prophesy. Your old men should dream dreams. Your young men should see vision. And also on my men seven. And on my next seven, I will pour out my spirit on those days. What he said, he's going to pour his spirit in you and I. And that spirit, that's what we need, brothers and sisters. Because when you get that spirit, when you go somewhere, you can always be alert. When you go somewhere, you won't feel it. When you go somewhere, the spirit will guide you. Because it's, that's, that's why it is important for you. Because the Holy Spirit, it is the spirit of God, the Father, God, the Son, who resides in you and I. And so when you got that, that's why he told his disciples, wait. And you be wait. Because when you are wait, you're not anymore operating in the flesh. Now you operate in the spirit. When you operate in the spirit, your life is different. I remember, I remember many years ago when, when I, I was baptized in the, in the water baptism. And my desire was to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Because I saw other people who got the spirit. But when I went to the water baptism, I was expected to come out also with the the, the, the spirit, but it didn't happen. And I was a little bit sad. But you know something? I didn't stay there. And you know what I did? I yearned for it. This morning I'm talking to you. I don't know you, but he knows you. You got to yearn for it. If you yearn for it, he's going to do something with you. He's going to get you that. He's going to get you that power. I was yearning for it. I was desiring. And my heart was so much wanted to receive it something. Because the same thing he did with the disciple, he want to do it with you today. It's no longer about the disciple. The disciple is over. They have done the assignment and they went now to rest. But it's about you. Because you and I are the disciple of now. 
that we, we got an assignment to do. We got work to do. But we can't do this work if we look quick. We can't do this work if we are powerless. We can't do this work. Look what's going on in this world, brothers and sisters. When somebody can go and buy a gun and go and shoot many kids, you don't think this is a spiritual warfare? It is a warfare who needs you. It is you who must be the answer to that warfare. You know what? If the church can take a stand, and our stand is not to go and fight, because it said this battle is not against flesh and blood. Our stand is not the flesh and blood. Our stand is in the spirit. If we can roll war in the rim of the spirit, we can stop all this thing before even you occur. I'm telling you, brothers and sisters, that's why you must be a quick. You must receive that power. That power will give you the ability. So when things happen, before even it happen, you can pray in the spirit. You can be engaged in the spirit. You can put the stop in the, in the spirit. And before you realize, this thing will stop. Church, let us wake up. Let us wake up. And how we wake up is when we take our stand in the realm of the spirit and battle. And so I was telling you, one day, Pastor and I, I drove her to Detroit. And one morning we prayed. And out of the blue, the Spirit followed me. The Spirit followed me. And you know what happened? The Holy Spirit had blessed my mouth. And I started speaking on another tongue. And before I realized, I speak. And after that, a minute later, it translates. I speak, it translates. I speak, it translates. For 45 minutes, that's how I got my, the feeling of the Holy Spirit. And when I got that, my life has changed. My life has changed because, you know what? I was working with power. I can sense it. I can feel it. When I open my mouth, fire come out. When I do things, I do it with power because I was a quick. The end of that made me realize the importance of being weak. The importance of being weak. Because you know, if you know it's weak, you're going to go in this world a blind side. And before you realize, you know, the enemy will get you. And then he will get you because you know it's weak. Church, we must be weak for the work God has for us. And this is why it is important. Look, really, that promise Jesus made to his disciples, it was to you and I. We are the disciples of today. We are those. That's why this message is given to you. You got to really be open for you to receive that power. So when you have that power, when you go out, you can handle what is confronting you. First of all, with you and also your environment, because you see, there's a key thing. Now, that's why he says something. And let me take you there again. Act 1. Verse 8 is Jesus who talking. Yeah. He said, but you should receive power. That's a good thing with the Holy Spirit when you get it. You receive power. He said you should receive power. When the Holy Spirit comes up on you, and you should be my witness. You should be witnesses to me in Jerusalem, in Judea, in Samaria, and to the end of the year. The, the earth. Do you know something? When you receive that power, it gives you the ability to witness it. You know some of the reason why it's hard for us to witness it is because we don't have the power. When you open your mouth, you can stop it. But you know the good thing is when you receive that power, the first thing, evil, you know that your training place is your Jerusalem. And your question is, where is my Jerusalem? Your Jerusalem is your immediate family. People around you, your Jerusalem is your immediate family, your children, your relatives, those who know you. That's where you will train yourself. That's your Jerusalem. That's the one you should raise up with them. That's when you receive that power. I remember when I received it, I started around me. All those who, I'm telling you, man, my close friends, my people around me, they, they, they fell up to speak, but you know what? I didn't care. I didn't care. I was in trouble. You know, at the end, they had and accept it. Yes. Now when I go somewhere, I say that the preachers come to the attitude because I saw it. It was about the power I received. That power made people around me not bad. I mean, it is not bad down to me. 
I don't the spirit. So when I open my mouth, they take seriously what I say. And before that, no. That's why it is important for us. It may me understand the word of Jesus say, wait until you be a queen. Wait until you receive power. Wait until you receive power. If you don't have power, believe me, it will be it will be very difficult because he said, he said, it's not my power, not my mind, it's by my spirit. When you have the spirit of the living God, they will give you the ability to do things you couldn't do on your own. And then when you go places that way, things will be like, you know, people will be amazed. When you open your mouth, somebody will say, but this is the answer of my issue. But because the spirit knows all. Do you know all of us are here, are one in the spirit? The spirit know where we are. The spirit will know where we stand. And like I said to you, the first place is your Jerusalem. But after that, you can go to Samaria. Samaria is the next town. Where is your next town? Your place of work. Your place of work. You go there. When you are right there, you sometimes you don't even have to say much. The spirit will help you. Whatever you go open your mouth to say, everybody will say, yes, you know. Oh. You know? That's really that's when the spirit, the power is operating with you. Brothers and sisters, it's very important for us to understand. This is why you need that power. That's why you need that power. You see, it's so important. And after that, you say you go to the end of the world. The biggest mistake people make. Then when they receive the power, they want to go to the end of the world. But I tell you one thing: if you didn't try in your Jerusalem, how you know it worked? When you go into the end of the world, you didn't have a chance to try to experience. You know, when you receive something, you got to try it. You got to experience it in the various occasions so you will know what, what not. And so it can make you stronger and you can be more stronger because don't forget, when you go to the end of the world, there's also stronger spirit you got to go from. But you got to start with the, the one you know. And after now, when you go to the, the end of the world, for the stronger spirit, already quick. That's why it is important. Very important. Very important. So let us really go to Act 2. The day of Pentecost. But, uh, but as, as, as we go into the brothers and sisters, I don't want you to look at the outside of you. I want you to put yourself in the midst of it. And suddenly, there came a sound from heaven. And like seven, like we are here, the sun comes from heaven and to all of us right now. And then as of a rushing mighty wind filled this room. And it's filled the old house, the old room where we were sitting. That filled all of us right now. Yes. Verse 3. Then they appeared to them divided tongue as of the fire, and one set up on each of them. The Bible now is coming from people to people because the angel of the Lord who's ministering are uh, really bringing the Bible of each and every one right now in the name of Jesus. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. You and I, we all start being feeling. Just receive your feeling in the name of Jesus. We are filled with the Holy Spirit right now. And they say it began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. And now they start beginning to speak on the other tongue. And as the Spirit give us utterance, you know, it, it, it is the Spirit language. It is a spirit language who's been really, it is, a, it is an outpouring of the spirit language. Do you know the spirit of language? You know something? That brought me a remembrance of something. Do you know in the Old Testament? You heard about the Tao of Babel. All those have the same language. And the same language made them be, you know, when people have the same language, they were together. They start building a tower to reach God. God saw it and said, no way. These people, if I don't put a confusion on them, they will reach heaven. That's how God put confusion. So what I mean by that, we used to have the same language. We used to have the same language. We used to have one language. And it's the language of heaven. And that language 
language was given to us in the beginning, but because people were crooked, people were using it, misusing it, God had to do something. So people cannot misuse it. Because at that time, if you remember, they say the angel was mixing with people. That's why at that time, you got people who are supernatural now. Who can do supernatural then? But I'll tell you something. You receive the Holy Spirit. You receive the supernatural power to do supernatural things. Because that power, the same power, is being released to you right now in the name of Jesus. All you need to do is to receive it by faith. Do you know, it's a way by faith that is impossible to please God. You can open your spirit to receive that power. Open your step to receive that power. Let the Holy Ghost power walk in you. The same who followed the disciple in the day of Pentecost. That's the same power who's following on us right now in the name of Jesus. Let him really open your heart. Open your heart and receive that power in the name of Jesus. Open yourself because if you open yourself, you're going to receive it. All you got to be, you got to yearn for it. All you got to be is desire. All you want because you want power. You want power for the right reason. The right reason is to do greater work. Even greater than Jesus has done because you have that power. This morning, the same power is available to you. The same power is available to you. It's been given to you. The same way it was given to the disciples, it's been given to you. This is our day of Pentecost. Today is our day of Pentecost. It is our day of receiving power. It is our day where Jesus has set up such a power for you and I. Because you know what? We will enter into the sixth month. And the sixth month in June, God wants to do supernatural things, but He must equip you. Do you know next week is the day of Pentecost, actually? But today is our day of Pentecost. It's the day when we receive power. It's the day when the power who was promised to the disciples, who was promised to you and I as disciples, that same power coming out to us right now in the name of Jesus. That power to give us the ability to do more than we can think, more than we can imagine. That power is being released to you right now in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Yes. Receive it. Receive it. Receive it. Verse 5 says, And there were dwelling Jerusalem Jews they were the men from every nation under the heaven. And when this sound occurred, the multitude came together. And were confused because everyone heard them speak in his, in his own language. Verse 7. Then they were all amazed and never saying to one another, Look, are not all these who speak Galilean? I mean, when you got power, when you receive that power, when you speak, you know, I have, uh, have, uh, have uh, some of the, uh, I, I, because I went to a, a healing school in South Africa many years ago. And one of the, the minister really, a course training me, one of the things he did really is, you know, sometimes when you start, and uh, prayer and speaking in tongues. There was somebody who's a Japanese guy among us. He started hearing that in Japanese. He mean what? Because it was said for him, he, he heard his Japanese language. But somebody else hears something else. But that's really to tell you, it is so powerful when you receive that power. That power will equip you to do things. Do you know when you pray in the spirit? You may not know what you pray about, but it got directly to the throne room. It got directly to heaven. And Jesus know what you pray about. You know, I remember Pastor Ida when she was giving her testimony about receiving the tongue. When she got it, her thing was to pray for her mother. But when she started praying, she started hearing praying for somebody else. Do you know? And I think every day when I pray, I don't know sometimes who I pray for, but I pray for everybody. And believe me, sometimes people call me from other country. I don't know who. And they tell me, you know what? I feel something. And I think it's coming from 
from somewhere. Well, you know, I didn't know. Because I didn't make sure they met. Because the spirit knew it. The spirit knew it. The spirit knew each and everything. That's why I want to encourage people. Don't have that power. When you have that power, your life will never be the same. You want you will never operate in, you know, in a in a in a in a small way. It will keep you a major platform. A platform where Jesus is Lord. Because he said, let, let, let me really bring you ready to understand why it is very important for you to understand that. Jesus said to you and I, in John 16, 13, he said, however, when he, the spirit of truth, do you know who is the truth? Jesus is the truth. He said, when the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth. It means you will have guidance. The spirit will guide you. It's like, a, you see, the, the military people talk, talking about missile guiding. But the Holy Spirit is more than that. It will guide you on all the truth. Because you know why? It knows the truth. And the truth is not the truth you think you know. Because a lot of us think we know the truth. But I'll tell you something. You know some truth, but you don't know all truth. But the all truth is the Holy Spirit. Of God. That's why he knows the all truth. You know why he knows the all truth? Because he was in the beginning. And he's at the end. You and I, we are in the movie theater. We are in the middle of the, day, the movie. And we base all our judgment where we are. But that's why we make wrong judgment. Because a lot of times you don't kill somebody because you don't know their story. You don't know where they're coming from. You don't know what the issue are. And you base your judgment on where they are right now. But that's the biggest mistake. But that's why you need the Holy Spirit who knows the whole truth. And what that Holy Spirit will make you stop judging others. Stop even think something wrong about others. Because I say to people, when you know you see something doing, somebody doing something wrong, instead of judging, turn it to prayer. Turn it to prayer. Let your prayer make it different. Like, you know, when I see this young boy who went and killed, how many kids? How many kids he killed? Well, you know one thing? It, it doesn't make sense. I don't know what this issue is. I don't know nothing. But that's why we need to turn it to prayer. America, we need to pray. We need to pray more now than ever before. When I see a same young boy who could go decided to go and buy, uh, and buy a gun and go to the store and just decided to keep black people out of nothing, what do you think it is? It is not the young man. It is the spirit entering to him. That's why I told you in the beginning. There is a choice. Who, who you are allowed to choose that it is your choice. Is it the Holy Spirit? On the spirit of the world. Yes. And the spirit of the world will use you to destroy. But the Holy Spirit will use you to heal, to deliver, to do good things. That's why we need the power of the Holy Spirit. So we will do good. So we can conquer. We can go against the wrong of this world. We can stand in prayer. We can stand in the gut. And we can call in the mighty name of Jesus. And that name who have power over the earth and under the earth will exercise that power to us. To, you know, God will never intervene in after the world if you know invited. You will never intervene in after the world if you know invited. But you know what invite God is our prayer. He said the prayer of the righteous one. You are the righteous. That's why today you must receive that power. You must renew that power. You must exercise that power so you can do greater work even greater than Jesus have done. You know why? He's sitting at the right hand of the Father. He's interceding on our behalf. He knows all, but he needs you. He won't do it on his own. He needs your help. He needs you to have valuable your dwelling so he can use it as a vessel of honor. That's why it is important for you and I to understand that. He said he will guide you into all truth. First of all, he will guide you into all truth. That's one. And, and, and I said, for he will not speak on his own authority. You know, the Holy Spirit will never speak on his own authority. He will speak to you what he heard the Father and the Son say. So basically, 
you become connected. You become connected to the Father and to the Son. The voice of the Father, the voice of the Son now coming to you. But whenever you hear, he will speak. He will speak to you whenever you hear the Father say. Yes. And he will tell you then to come. Do you know, if we will pray properly, and we will really have put ourselves in disposition to receive from God. And he was telling us things before he come. You don't think we can have better some of the big things will happen right now to our prayer? That's the question to you and I. You don't know we could have heard some of the killing, some of the shooting to our prayer. Because he will reveal that to us. So before I come, we go know that. And so when we know, you know what we do? He said, where well, two, three people gather together in my name, whatsoever you ask, you give it to you. So you can call somebody and say, you know what? I have received an insight. There's something is about to happen. Because the spirit will not reveal everything to you. But it will reveal back to you. But your obedience will make it reveal more to you. So when you reveal it to you, you will really share it. And now by sharing, we can start praying. It means we can stand in the gap. When we stand in the gap, we put a stop to it. We can put a stop to it. That's why it is very important for us. He would, and in verse 14, he said, he would glorify me, Jesus said, for he would take of what is mine and declare it to you. I mean, the Holy Spirit would take what is of Jesus and say that to you and I. So it is very important for us to know that. To know that. That's why you need it. John 14, verse 25 and 26. It is Jesus talking to us again. He said, this thing I have spoken to you while being present with you. You know when Jesus was here? He was speaking to us. He was teaching us. He was, that's why it is important for you to understand the word. He was speaking to us. Say, yeah, why are they present? First one is he said, but the helper. You know the Holy Spirit is called helper. Yeah. This is why we, we all need to activate the helper. You know, when you're in danger, when you're in the places where you don't understand what's going on, it's called your helper. The helper is the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is there to help you. But the good thing is, it will never help you against your will. And that's the key thing. The Holy Spirit will never do something against your will. But you gotta cooperate with the Holy Spirit. So he will help you. If you cooperate with the Holy Spirit, believe me, because sometimes, you know, we want to do things on our own. Those who get you. But when you come and say, you know what, I don't know, please help me. He will start activating. I just say, please help me, Holy Spirit. That's an activation of the heaven. When you say justice help me, immediately you will start helping. Because it means it mean you, uh, you, you surrender your power to his power. At that moment, immediately he will start helping. He will start helping you immediately. That's a very important, you know. But the helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send a man, he will teach you. Do you know the Holy Spirit is a teacher? The best teacher. Is the Holy Spirit. Do you know the Holy Spirit know the word of God from A to C? And believe me, that's why my thing to you is before you study the Bible, just start praying. This is the advice I give to people. You know, people open the Bible like they open a regular book. The Bible is not a regular book. Brothers and sisters, I'm sorry. It's a spiritual book. So if it's a spiritual book, you got to engage the spirit behind. And when you engage your spirit behind, you go open your eyes. You go start revealing things. But that's why you need the Holy Spirit. Because he's going to teach you. Believe me, he going to start breaking down things. And he's going to start really make you understand some of the things you can't comprehend. It. But it's just because now he's going to reveal the mystery behind the world to you. Because behind the world, there's a mystery. And that mystery must be revealed. And the only thing who can reveal it to you is the Holy Spirit. He going to teach you. He said he going to teach you all things. That's, you see, it, it, it doesn't put limitation 
from what this will teach you. All things. It is the one thing. You see, some of the things we think, you know what? You go, oh yeah, you know, or this thing is not necessary because I'm, I don't understand it. He, he may not be telling you that, but I see all things. It is the one thing. I'm talking about this. All things. So don't put the limit on what you want the Holy Spirit to teach you. He can teach you all things. If you have a problem with your children, the Holy Spirit can teach you how to raise your children. If you have a problem in your marriage, the Holy Spirit can teach you how to stand in your marriage. If you have a problem in your finances, the Holy Spirit can teach you how to bring it and handle better in your finances. Do you know the people of the world use the Bible better than us? Yes, they use better than us. Let me tell you something, my brother. Do you know every law you see there? If you really want to take the, the origin of that, they come from the word of God. Everything comes from the word of God. But you know the people of the world, but the, that thing is they're going to treat, you know, they're going to use it the honor. But we who have the really word, why don't we use it to better ourselves? Why don't we use it to help ourselves? Why don't you we use it to help our brothers and sisters? Why don't we use it to make a difference? Because this is the word of God says the world is waiting for the revelation of the children of God. You are the children of God who must be revealed. But how you be revealed is through the word of God. Yes. But when we go out, we behave like people of the world. When they start cussing, we curse like them. If you curse like me, why should I follow you? Why should I even listen to what you say? Because you do the same thing. And that's what happened. Do you know people are watching us? In our various place of work, and everywhere we go, we stand it. We say we are Christian. But you know, being Christian is not what you say. It's who you are. It is through your action. You know, if you, you're a Christian, you can't love somebody. What kind of Christian? The, the essence of being Christian, Christ came for only one thing. He died for one thing. He died so you and I, he can take us back to the Father. But what makes that happen is love. Yes. If you can love, you know a Christian. If you can forgive, you know a Christian. Forgiveness is the beginning of love. Forgiveness is the beginning of love. Because I'm telling you, this is true. I may wrong you, but I'll tell you one thing. If you can't forgive me, where is love in that? A lot of people are carrying people like a heavy load everywhere they go because they haven't forgiven. And after that, they realize their prayer life doesn't go nowhere. But it's just because how can your prayer can go somewhere if you carry others? Let them go forgive them. I'm not saying what they have done to you is right. No, it's not about that. It's not neither about right or wrong, but it's because Jesus said, he told people, how many times should you forgive? He said, as long as it's an issue, forgive. I'm talking to somebody. If you want the Holy Spirit to operate in you, you must forgive. You must forgive. You must forgive so the Holy Spirit can operate with you. It will never be in a place where it's unforgiveness. Because immediately he will kick him out. He going to remove him. But this morning, he wants to be fully in you. I decided to let go of all this. All the things your children have done to you. All the things your neighbor have done to you. All the things somebody else has done to you. You know what? Jesus, our example, at the cross, when you and I were crucified, he made a prayer for you and I. He said, Father, forgive them. Because they didn't know what they were doing. But he was talking about you and I. But you were ask me when, why, how? We want the loin of those who crucified. But he said, forgive them. So if we who are killing Jesus, he asks his father to forgive us. So who are we not to forgive those who wrong us? That's the reason why you got to choose to forgive. 
Yes. And the last thing here is, see, he brings to your remembrance all things that are seen. Do you know the biggest thing the devil used against us is to shut our memory so we won't remember. But the word of God says, he can bring to our memory. Because this is, you know, sometimes you're going to be somewhere and immediately you will bring back the word of God into your memory to address this issue. You're in the middle of a situation, the Holy Spirit will bring the word of God to your memory to address that specific issue and tell you, you know what? No weapon from against you shall prosper. Every time we raise up an accusation against you. You know, because you see, when you're in the middle of danger, you don't know what to say. Like uh, in the midnight hour. Because you see, sometimes in your sleep, when the enemy appears, but you don't have the word. But sometimes I say to people, the only word you need to know, Jesus. Jesus. Just call on that name. And sometimes I tell you, people, help her. Help her. And then you activate the power of the Holy Spirit. When it's activated, it will stop. Help me. I remember. I remember. Something happened to me many years ago. I was driving my car. It was in actually in New York Avenue. One early morning. And I was driving. You know, I believe it's a at the intersection. This guy. And he screamed. And I was coming. Believe me, I said, Jesus! That's what I have to say. Do you know what happened? It's like a force. But I saw me believe it was an engine. Move my car. Just move a little bit. Because I'm telling you, otherwise the shock would be so strong. I would have really lost my complete. But he moved my car just a little bit. So I won't be very happy. I'm telling you, angel obey the Holy Spirit. Angel are serving the Holy Spirit. Angel are, the, are, are, are basically power who can obey only the word of God. That's why you got to bring it to your memory. Because if you don't speak the word, the angel cannot activate it. That's why you got to know the word of God. Angel obey into the word of God. The assignment is to get the word of God and make it happen. He will tell me how. Do you know the word of God said in Isaiah 55, 11? He said, my word will never come back to me for it. My word. It means his word will never come back to him for it. He said, I'm watching after my word to perform it. He's watching after his word to perform it. But how are you watching? His, his, his angel are dispatching and their assignment is to take the word and to perform it. That's why it is important for you and I, brother and sister, to know the word. Because when you know the word, your life will never be the same. Your life will never be the same. Your life will never be the same. And the last verse is Jesus talking to you right now. This last verse is Jesus talking to us. He said, and when is before Jesus depart from to heaven, he said, and when he said, when he has said this, Jesus, breathe from them. Jesus, breathe in you right now. He's breathing in you right now. And say to you and I, receive the Holy Spirit this morning. Receive the Holy Spirit this morning. Receive the breath of life this morning in the name of Jesus. Receive the breath of life. Jesus said, receive it in the name of Jesus. Father, I just want to thank you. I thank you for breathing on each and every one. The breath of life, the breath of the Spirit, pouring into each and every one in the name of Jesus. So we can receive the breath of life. We can receive the the power of the Holy Ghost, the power will going to give us the ability to move one day. Any more than we are confronted in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, breathe in each and every one now. Breathe the Holy Spirit on us. Breathe.
ready to send you to your soul. You won't know him. So he can send you. Because I can't send somebody who don't know me. And I don't know them. So if you you don't really have Jesus, just put your hand up and we're going to pray. We're going to pray for you to receive Jesus first. Because I know when you receive Jesus, he will release his power for you. This power is a gift. He want to give it to you. But the first thing you require is for you to come to him. So if you're here, you're not sure if tomorrow Jesus comes, you won't make it. Just put your hand up. We're going to pray. Or if you're here, you know Jesus, but the life has done so much thing to you, and you're not sure now. Jesus, they come, renew your covenant. Because today, he wants to be with you. He want to use you. And you don't want to let that moment pass you by. Just stand up. And we're going to pray. We're going to pray. And that standing by, the Holy Spirit will be active in your life. If you hear. And that, you know, you're sitting and your heart is beating. The bim, 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 bam. It is Jesus. Tell him today, he want to renew his covenant with you. Just put your hand up. Don't be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. Put your hand up and we're going to pray with you. And you're going to let Jesus do what he does. He, he, he wants you. He wants you. That's why you want on your step. He wants you because he got a bigger assignment for you than you can handle. But you need a power. He can fulfill an assignment if you know it. Wait. Is there anyone? Is there anyone? If it's nobody, I thank God for all of us. Because if all of us are equipped, now I want you to clap for Jesus. Clap for Jesus. You know why you clap for Jesus? Because you are among those nine corners. Brothers and sisters, the, the thing is, more is being given, more is required. So now, Go and open your mouth and it can use you. If I is going to use you, sometimes it's a simple thing. And the simple thing is what? Invite people to church. Just start there. Invite people to church. Then let me know what. Why not you be my guest in my church? Next Sunday, but it's a simple thing, you know. But today, this Sunday, and, and then another thing I say to people if you invite somebody, then at that moment they say no. It doesn't mean. I don't, this maybe they say, you know what, today is not the right day. Why can't you let's see? Why keep inviting? And, and then top of inviting, because sometimes what really we don't want to do as Christians is go outside of our comfort zone. And you know what, it requires drive, extra life to make somebody. Because I tell you something, if you don't do that, every time you do that, Jesus is marking it. He remember that because you see somebody will make heaven because of you doing the extra miles. That's why it is important for us, brothers and sisters, to make sure let us really not sit always in our comfort zone. Oh yeah, no, 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 no. You know me, I always wait on the last minute. And so I can't no, no, no. no please obey. When you obey, oh, Go and extra minds. And you'll be used by the power of God. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. Let us pray. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you right now for the word, dear Lord. We thank you, Father, for your Holy Spirit. We thank you, dear Lord, that you gave us a helper. Hallelujah. And Father, we receive him right now in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you right now for that message that Pastor Marcel has preached. Pour back into him all that he has poured out, dear Lord, in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for this day. Bless all of those who are here today, dear Lord. Oh, Father, let your anointing be upon them. Bless those that are not here but are listening to us by Zoom and other faraway places, dear Lord. Oh, bless those, dear Lord. And we thank you for it. Bless us now as we prepare to go. Bless the food we're about to receive for the nourishment of our bodies, dear Lord. And we thank you. We praise you. We adore you, dear Lord. And we thank you. In the name of Jesus, we 
Amen, amen, amen. Come on and give the Lord a hand type of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can tell Prophet put a lot of effort in that message. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And we invite you to come in the back and enjoy some food. Hallelujah. Safe fellowship. Hug somebody. Hallelujah.